This is Zambia. The same one mafia. I'm a tax is higher. I'm a sala limaya. To survive in Zambia. Kusangu kakada. Are you lozo or tonga? They'll call you tribal. Please give me the Bible. The corruption nation. Huh? But Christian nation. Yeah, yeah. Give us beer, yeah, yeah. We love beer, yeah, yeah. Give us beer, yeah, yeah. Give us you, give us. <laughs> Now, musician Pilato has been arrested by police upon arrival. This controversial musician Fumba Chama, popularly known as Pilato in the music circle, has been picked up by Zambia police and immigration officers upon arrival from self-imposed exile in South Africa. Pilato is behind the song Lungu Anabuera Kunochekera Kuchawama and the current one Koswe Mumpoto, which talks about corrupt leaders. Koswe Mumpoto is said to have annoyed President Lungu who has vowed to tear him to pieces. Zambian ambassador here in South Africa, Emmanuel Mwamba, uh, or rather he's the uh, commissioner there, uh, joins me uh, from our Pretoria studios. Welcome, Your uh, Highness. Um, well, the last time I spoke to you, you had promised me that uh, Pilato was safe to go home. Well, he was safe, but remember he had an outstanding case uh, dating back to September 2017. President Lungu doesn't have the uh, best of records when it comes to dealing with those who do not talk well of him. I mean, HH is an example. He has uh, gone through uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so I must say it is very suspect what is happening to Pilato. Is Zambia a free country? A democratic state. This is Zambia. Avic International. Run by China. This is Sili. Who sold the school? Now that's a fool. Scando Pascando, Scando Pascando, Scando Pascando. Alumbu and Abuela, no bullies a patio. Why I had to leave Zambia and went to. Uh, South Africa basically was because I felt threatened. I started receiving phone calls, I started receiving uh, WhatsApp messages, WhatsApp voice notes, and video calls and videos of people threatening and telling me how they were going to to deal with me. They were told me how they were going to beat me, they were told, telling me how they were going to kill me. So I had to go to South Africa for my own safety. The threats going to court, the persecution would never stop me from doing music and do what I do simply because I'm like the sun, you know. It doesn't matter how much you complain about the heat. You complain about the heat, you cry about the heat. The job of the sun is to shine. Many people think that I'm a controversial artist. And surprisingly, I don't agree with them. I think the people themselves are controversial. I'll give you an example. I'll tell you why I think they are controversial. They are controversial because they see something wrong and they don't say anything. They don't do anything. That's supporting the wrong thing and that's being controversial. I'm not controversial because when I see something wrong, I would do what any other hum normal human being would do. <laughs> you don't support it by staying quiet. You you challenge it by saying something. My name is Pilato, aka Don Morillo Malinso. I'm reporting from nowhere to somewhere. At Parliament today, we talk to uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, talk to me. I'm inspired by the little ant. And this is a little insect, very small in a jungle where there is competition, there is competition and the competition is so strife. And uh, this little ant can't even fight. You know, this is a jungle where you have 
elephants, you have uh, monkeys, you have you have so many dangerous and weird animals. And this little thing still survives, you know. It does not fight back, it does not do anything, it does not work so hard to be alive, you know. And this little thing is there. If you chose to kill it, you would easily kill it. So for me, that's at the moment I'm inspired by that little ant. I, I, I've come to a point in my life where I feel there is nothing that I can do to protect myself because the forces that are against me are so powerful that even if I was to get so serious and so protective of myself, I wouldn't manage. So I feel I'm like that little ant that if the big boys, the big politicians, the big gangster, the big thug decided to attack me and do anything to me, I would just be like that little ant in the jungle. I would be killed, I would be, I would be dealt with severely. But that won't stop me from living my life. This is the house where I grew up from. I usually do come to this place, uh, not, not the house but in Ndeke. I drive in the evenings with my windows up just to reconnect. I mean, it's claim how the Ndeke influences my music that much. It, it, it however influences the way I look at people. Uh, growing up here, usually we used to, we lived like a community. My mother here had friends there, 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 and on the weekend, uh, like this, you know, they could be they could be seated together and you know, uh, prepare food together, and all of us would sit and eat as kids from one, two, three, four, five houses. We could sit from one place. So I began to see how we need each other in this life, and how uh, community is very important. Pilato. <laughs> Usually when I do something wrong and my mother wanted to beat me, I could run here, I could run to her. <laughs> you know, like I used, uh, I used to run and hide uh, here. Like it's, it was more like one, one house in different places, you know. So like usually when I do something wrong, my mother, my mother obviously would slap and scream. So to avoid that, I would come here. But when the mistake is so, so serious, she would also beat me. <laughs> Well, uh, my name's uh, Katibo Chama, uh, but I'm, I'm called Katigo. Uh, I'm the third born uh, from a family of uh, four. In uh, 1999, uh, we, we happened to lose our parents, and uh, as a family, that was the beginning of, uh, of hardships. One memories I can easily go was one day uh, I came back home I was in grade nine by I think grade nine grade eight uh, I came back home and uh, we had stayed for I would say days with uh, with no proper meal and uh, uh, and I was so hungry by I was really, really angry. So what happened was, uh, I, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a vegetable called rape in Zambia. And uh, what you do, before you start preparing, you need to cut it. Uh, so what happened was that we, few weeks, we bought uh, those vegetables. Now, the, 
they are, it's not everything that you cook from it. So you need to cut it and then the other things you throw it. So these other parts that we threw in a, in a bin, uh, because I was so much hungry, I got it. I went to the bin, uh, got those things and then I cleaned them up, washed them and I had to pour them, uh, just pour it all, that's all. I stood there and uh, he cried. He, he, he really cried and I remember quite well one thing he said, uh, you know what, there will come a time when all these things will be our story. Uh, my message is, like we do not attain humanity when you become rich. We are human beings, even without so much money. The moment we begin to think that money defines our humanity or we become humans when we become rich, then society becomes a very dangerous place because people do everything they have to do to become rich so then they can get the respect, they can be defined as human beings and it disadvantages those that do not have much and it promotes uh, inequality and it's, it's, it compromises humanity. So my message to everybody that is listening is we all have a duty to work towards a society that is uh, equal, the society that is just a society where human beings will be human beings regardless of how much they have. My biggest dream is to, to be in the biggest city on earth, you know. Uh, for example, I would, I would like to be in New York, the streets of America, and scream that I'm Zambia and I'm from Zambia. And people would be so interested in knowing about Zambia. I do not have to explain it, I do not have to justify it, I just have to say it. I would want us to belong to a country that's, that gives pride and hope to its people, that we do not have to view love ourselves. We do not have to explain ourselves using the Victoria food, you know. I would want to scream, I'm Zambian anyway. I would want to go to the Netherlands and say I'm from Zambia and everybody would be like, yeah, Zambia! Without me talking about the Victoria Falls, without me talking about the poor kids that would survive uh, with the one euro donation. It's, that's my dream. Zambia!